Here's Josh Sheftel and his mom on Matters of the Heart. Mine's the beauty parlor. Friday. Why did you do Friday so that you're ready for the weekend? Of course. Uh, uh, I want to talk with you about the gender. The only thing I know about it is that they show faces of the people that want to meet other people and they pick you by how you look. If you swipe to the left, you skip the person. If you swipe to the right, it means that you want to meet them. I don't like it. I think if you want to meet somebody for a real relationship, that's not the way to do it. Some of the nicest, fun people may not always be the most attractive ones. So, you know, people use it to date me to hook up. Uh -huh. Do you know what that means? To go out together. Well, yeah, but hooking up means more than that. Really? Just be, and you don't know anything about the person? You don't know they don't have a blood test? That's awful. Younger people don't see it that way. They see it as normal now. That's how they meet people. What a crazy world. What would be the first thing you'd say to a stranger that you met on Tinder? Your photographs appeal to me, but I have to be honest with you. I'm really not interested in a fast trip to the bedroom. That seems fair. How does it feel to know that you would be getting swiped by people? You know, you feel like a piece of meat in the butcher case. Would you try to hear? No. Oh, no. I'm not cooking up anymore. <laughs> I mean, you could meet a pervert. Uh -huh. I mean, it's just because just they're handsome. Like, Ted Bundy wasn't bad looking. <laughs> How did you used to date? People would see me and ask me out. I had a lot of dates. In high school, we used to have dances, and we would have a boyfriend for that week, and then when we went to the dance, we'd find another one. It was fun. With Dad, we were fixed up, and the first time I went out with him, I didn't even like him that much, and he really didn't like me. But something happened, and he asked me out a second time, and I really got to know him that time, and he was really funny and nice and polite, a medical student, a great dancer, and I really liked him. How do you feel about being somewhere new? You know, I'm kind of used to my life now. It isn't that I wouldn't like to meet somebody, but I think it should be natural. I would want somebody to come up to me and say something like, you know, I think it'd be fun. Let's go to a movie and dinner, that kind of thing. I would like that. Yeah, me too. But I want to tell you something. Men my age, they're looking for women 10 or 15 years younger than them. So a little bit of a dilemma. So you don't want to date any oldsters? Well, I don't want to take care of somebody. What if they were really good looking? It wouldn't hurt. What if they were really rich and handsome? How old? Nine. But are they nice? What if they were rich and have some nice? It might be good while it lasts. I wake up every morning and ask you what's happening in the world, why is this happening, and how do we answer that question? Oh, that's Josh Harris brings a new vision for the commanders. You're trying to build us for this area. Yes, sir. And hearing your voice. That's right. I am. And interviews Watson and Mickey. Watson out of the lemon. Only on WUSA 9 News. What makes a challenger? Someone who stands up to the powerful today for a better tomorrow. They are you and me.
the latest advancements, like operating rooms of life-changing technology, while treating everyone with compassion in our healing patient rooms. How can we make our emergency room big enough to save more lives, yet quiet enough for private conversations? This is how the Never Standard Pavilion at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. At Giant, when budgets are tight, we keep our communities knit even tighter. With every way to save on all the milk you crave, all winter long. Giant, this is home. Born in Alaska, raised in Kansas. Actor Charles Melton's journey to Hollywood has had some curious stops along the way. But you might say, he's arrived. He's in conversation with our Tracy Smith. They're a very beloved part of this community. In the film May December, Julianne Moore and Charles Melton play a married couple with issues. Okay, we all have issues, but they have a few more than most. I'm very sympathetic, but you're starting to upset me. No, you have not been sympathetic. Why can't we talk about it? The movie is said to be loosely inspired by a true story. In suburban Seattle, an admitted child rapist was sentenced this day. Mary Kay Letourneau, a 34-year-old grade school teacher, was sentenced to seven years in prison for having a relationship with one of her underage students, Billy Falau. I did something that I have no right to do. When Letourneau was released in 2004, she and Falau, who was by then 21, got married and raised their two children. <coughs> For Charles Melton, the role of Joe, the young husband, was both a huge opportunity and a terrifying challenge. For Joe, there's so much weight he's carrying, and it really stems in his soul, just deep, this arrested development. And to help tell the story of a man with the weight of the world on his shoulders. People, they like to see me as like a victim. Melton changed the way he walked, and he put on some weight. How many pounds? Close to 40 pounds. Wow. How? Like five guys, triple cheeseburger with bacon, large Cajun fries, two hot dogs, nacho cheese on them. You know, I made the excuse that it was for my, you know, for Joe's story, but really it was for me. <laughs> you liked it. I loved it. <laughs> yes, I did. That transitioned into me going through a baggy clothes era, which I really enjoyed. The truth is, Melton made his name in anything but baggy clothes. As Reggie Mantle in the TV series Riverdale, he was an athletic high school jock who was lean and sometimes mean. Isn't he killing a coach? To watch the Bulldogs lose week after week? Yeah, well, it's not all about winning, Reggie. You're telling yourself that loser. The real Charles Melton was born in 1991 in Juneau, Alaska. His dad, Phil, was a career army man who met Charles' mother, Suk Young, in her native Korea. The family settled for good near Phil Melton's last duty station in Manhattan, Manhattan, Kansas. Charles was a sensitive kid who often wasn't content unless he was holding his mother's hand. My husband called me, Charles says, a mama's a boy. Because when we're riding road trail, always he hit of me, mommy, hand. <laughs> so I'm in the front, passenger seat, and he's in the back, and I have to give him my arm. Oh, I like that. Hold maybe five or six hours. And still, like, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he was raised to appreciate his Korean heritage. And it wasn't until I was about 20, when I came to Los Angeles, that I learned the term Hapa, which is half of something. I did not know what that was. And I think that term, I, I, I would prefer not to say that term anymore. I'm just like, no, I'm pretty American and I'm proud. Moving around that much, was it tough to make friends? Kind of. That's why I fell into sports. What do you think your future was going to be? Oh, I wanted to play in the NFL. That was my dream for 10 years. And he might have had a shot. Melton was a talented player who would train hard and then sneak back into the Manhattan High School Stadium on his own for a little extra practice. I jumped the fence. I'd come here late at night. No one inside. I'd lay down. I'd look at 
the stars. I walk around this film and just visualize Wayne making certain plays. And I do that before every football game. Do you think it worked? Well, for the games we won, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went on to play college ball at Kansas State, got a few modeling gigs, and in 2012, with a month's worth of food packed by his mother, set out for Hollywood to try his hand at acting. You came to L.A. with what? $500 and a dream. <laughs> and a lot of ramen noodles. And a lot of ramen noodles, yes. Fast forward to 2023, and Charles Melton's riveting performance as a young man struggling with grown-up problems. His inspiration, he says, was drawn from a specific moment in his own childhood, when his dad, who was about to ship out for Iraq, told his 11-year-old son that it was time for him to step up. It's still a tough thing for dad to talk about. So I said, to him, I talked to him, told him he's got to be man of the house and everything. You know, and when I reflect back on it, maybe if something would happen to me, he'd been stuck in that role, trying to be where I always will. I always plan on coming back, but you don't want to put that on somebody. But I'm glad he can use that. You know, sorry, Army guys are giving me a hard time. Charles Melton is keeping his family close. They were with him on a lot of the award season red carpets, and they'll stay at his side for what comes next, whenever and whatever that may be. Okay, so let's talk about the future a little bit. So there are a lot of opportunities out there now. There's, there's a few there's a few things that I'm like really excited about that I'm looking at that I just feel so much gratitude. You know, you don't really ever think about what's gonna come next usually, especially with everything that's going on in my life right now. You know, just staying grounded. Yeah. I think it's you don't wanna look too far ahead. I don't wanna look too far ahead. I just wanna uh, just uh trust and have faith that the right thing's going to come when it's meant to come. I got a silver room for us to wear a piece. To discover all the places that make us feel something more. Did you know you waste 200 hours a year hand washing dishes? Huh? Huh? You're turning your back on the moments that matter. There's a better option than hand washing. Switch to your dishwasher. Maybe it's the power of John to thoroughly clean your dishes, removing 99% of grease and food.
All sorts of places like here at Philadelphia's Franklin Square, not far from the city's Chinatown, where for the past eight summers, visiting artisans from Zigong turn almost anything into a lantern. And we do mean anything. From the familiar to the fantastic, lanterns inspired by ancient Chinese legend. And this year, it being the year of the dragon, one legend in particular, dragon, the symbol of the Chinese zodiac sign, representing health, strength, and good fortune. May yours be an illuminating lunar new year. I was lost till Sunday morning. I woke up to face my feet. So 